Hey booktube, this is Kelly. Thank you so much for watching my channel, books I'm not reading. Um, I'm I'm kind of here today to do a tag. It's, kind of, it's, it's sort of an abridged and uh, inconsistent version of Aaron Facer's The Western Canon Book Tag. Um, there's also another tag going around and I will link all the information to both these tags. Um, but the other tag going around that I've seen is why haven't I, why haven't I read that? And that's sort of how I feel about the things I've chosen for the Western Canon book tag. I haven't read all of them, um, but I do think they're important. And um, the, the reason why I really wanted to do this tag is I, I really like Erin's idea behind it because I, I do feel like there's a layering effect that goes on with literature. I mean, for one thing, right? Like, I mean, we always talk about how Shakespeare stole <laughs> a lot of things, but he was heavily influenced by a lot of things. And if you, if you look at the notes, um, you know, you'll see that some of the things that came before him really shaped his, his writing. When I went to college, I did not, I, I, I don't have a degree in English or anything like that. Um, I was in the honors program my freshman year and the first semester, the class that we took was, um, I think my university's attempt to like condense the Western canon into one semester, which is, is pretty impossible. Um, but, uh, so a lot of the books that I'm going to show you, I read parts of <laughs> in that class, which is again, like, I haven't read all of it, but I do feel like it's important. Not only do I not have 20 books that Aaron wants us to talk about in the Western Canon book tag, but I haven't read some of these and I don't know why. I really, I don't know why. I think just a, a, a big part of it was that I took those two honors classes, but the second semester was so bad um, and I hated the professor so much for the second semester that I dropped out of the honors program and the only other literature course I took in college was Native American women's literature which was fantastic and was maybe the my favorite class that I took um in college in my four years of college but uh yeah, so I just want to show you some of the things I've read and some of the things I haven't read, but I think are really important. So, of course, we're going to start off with The Odyssey, which I have read. I did read. Um, my mother loves to tell people the story because I have been keeping track of the books I've read <laughs> since, since my senior year of high school. And... Uh, and so my mother always likes to joke, uh, that, uh, before I went off to college, I read Time Swept Brides, and then the first book I read, um, at the university was The Odyssey, um, Homer's The Odyssey, and I, this is not the, uh, translation I read, I think it's beautiful, um, but, um, I really enjoyed The Odyssey, I thought The Odyssey was great, it was always, Again, there's just a lot of references to this in things that come later that, you know, even in even in more kind of um, like genre fiction, you might might be reading a mystery and there's a reference to the wine dark sea. It may not have anything else to do with the rest of the story, but it's 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 more fun and it's richer when you know like, oh, that's from the Odyssey. <laughs> so um, the other one by Homer, <clears throat> which I haven't read, <laughs> and this is a just, man, this copy is huge, uh, is the Iliad. Uh, and this one was translated by Richard Lattimore. Um, I, I, I would prefer a smaller copy of this in order to read it. Um, but I do think it's important to find, you know, if you like a translation, then, you know, you should do that. But anyway, so, so the, I have not, I have not read the Iliad, but I do think, I do think an understanding of those, those books is important. <sighs> okay. The next, the next book, um, I'm sure is going to be a little bit controversial. I purely mean 
this as literature and not um, for you know purposes of faith, but um, the Bible. <laughs> there are so many references to uh, so many biblical references in in everything that comes after the Bible. Um, and of course, the Bible wasn't written down for quite a while. Uh, it was it was oral history. Um, the New Testament is a little bit different, but but still, um, you know. And I think as our society becomes more and more secular, you know, these references are getting lost on us. Now, this is the King James version, which some people might you know swear by. Um, I, this is a women's, uh, edition, but this is the new international version. And I really like the new international version, but definitely if you're, if you're going to make a commitment to read the Bible as literature, um, the, uh, finding the translation that works for you is definitely the best way to go. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's really hard for me to say, whether I feel uh, the Old Testament, I mean, especially the first five books in the Bible, um, and there's the Psalms, and oh my goodness, and the, the New Testament, all just incredibly influential on, on everything else. There's just, and, and again, whether you, whether you believe in any of that or not, um, I, I'm not saying to read it, you know, that you have to read it as a book of faith, but as as a book of literature, which it definitely can be read as. Okay, next book. Oh, this is about um, the uh, origin of the Roman nation, uh, Virgil's The Aeneid, which I also, I did read this, um, obviously not this particular edition, um, for my honors class and I struggled so much with the translation that we were reading that I finally went to a local bookstore and bought a different edition because it was, this was a, a real, a real struggle for me in a way that, um, the Odyssey wasn't. I think, I think I got, I got into the story of, of the Odyssey much more than, than the Aeneid. Um, let's see. Historically, I'm not quite sure what comes next, but I'm going to go with Ovid's Metamorphosis. Um, again, I, and I don't know why I don't own a copy of this because I really loved, uh, the Metamorphosis when I read it in college. I really would like to return to this. Um, again, this library copy is just, Oh God, it's so beaten up. But anyway, um, so I would like to own this again at some point and reread it because Ovid is, um, you know, was Shakespeare's favorite book. And um, again, I I really loved all of these transformational stories. And there's a lot of things that are very, um, you know, you guys would recognize in this um, Pyramus and Thisbe. Um, which of course uh, plays into A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, Pygmalion, which becomes uh, Pygmil you know, a play and then a musical, My Fair Lady. Um, uh, Perseus and Andromeda, for those of you who've watched uh, Class Clash of the Titans. Uh, the Fall of Troy, right? The Horse, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, I do think, I do really feel like this is part of the Western canon. I'm gonna go with uh, Dante's Divine Comedy again. Okay, so I read The Inferno in uh, the honors class, but I never went on to read Purgatorio or Paradiso, and I don't know why. Like, why? Why didn't I do that? So, um, and I actually would like to read The Inferno again. I thought The Inferno was excellent. Again, there's a lot of figures that in, in books we've already talked about that, you know, if you read the Inferno, you won't understand like why they're in hell or who they are. Um, and Tom at LA Books has done such a great job of, of, I mean, God, he went through like, I think every single canto um, in this. And so it's nice that that's out there um, on 
uh, on booktube and you know maybe at some point I will I will read along and I will watch those videos with it so okay the next one I thought I had read <laughs> until until one of you wonderful people sent me a copy of uh, Boccaccio's The Decameron and I was like no, no, we did not read the full Decameron in the honors class. Um, but it is, yeah, again, another influential book. Uh, there's plague and uh, people take refuge in the countryside and tell each other's stories. And I have not read the Canterbury Tales and I don't even think we own a copy of it. Um, but I would imagine that, you know, there's, there's some shared stories or similarities uh, in that kind of situation. But uh, so, yeah, look how beautiful this edition is. Um, just lovely. So anyway, so I, I mean, again, I'm like, why haven't I, why haven't I read the whole thing? Like, probably because it's intimidating. It's huge. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna make a big jump in time. <laughs> And, um, I, I hope I have not, I have not watched everyone's, uh, Western canon tag, but I'm assuming that, that everyone is hopefully including Shakespeare um, in there. Uh, I realize Shakespeare wrote plays, uh, and poetry, um, but his plays are incredibly influential, um, Jason and I keep joking about uh, putting a jar on the coffee table and every time we hear a reference to Shakespeare or Dickens um, in, a, in a commercial or in a, a TV show, we were, we were recently watching Iron Legend and <laughs> which, on Netflix and uh, yeah, there was, there was a reference to Hamlet, which if I only could choose one of Shakespeare's plays, this is the one that I would choose. Um, if you haven't read Hamlet, like, it's gonna, it's gonna blow you away. Knock your socks off. Aaron went farther along in his, you know, in history with his Western canon tag. Um, I guess the only other two authors that I would feel comfortable mentioning as far as being maybe part of the Western canon. Um, I, I do think, I do think without a doubt, Jane Austen belongs in the Western canon. And if I could only pick one book, I would pick Pride and Prejudice. Um, I find it so interesting when I watch um, people on booktube who read a lot of romance um, and don't realize um, that, kind of the, the plots of of those stories are, you know, have some sort of origin with Jane Austen. So I think I think it would be a shame um to deny her her place in the Western canon, even though, you know, she only has six six major works. Um and then I would have to say um at last um Dickens belongs uh, in the Western canon, and I would, I would put Bleak House in there if I could only put one of his books in there. I just think it's just a real. It's one of those books you get done with it, and you're just like, how did he do that? Which is kind of how I felt about Hamlet, actually. Um, but one of the things that I, I don't know if you guys read the notes or the footnotes. I'm currently reading Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope and the notes have been fascinating so far. There, there haven't been very many. Um, of course, I'm not very far into the book, but, um, let's say, so the first note has to do just, just to give you like a glimpse. Okay. So this is a Victorian writer and these are the things that he's making reference to. So, um, one is Goshen, which is the land Joseph gave to the Israelites in Egypt. That is in Genesis in the Bible. Galen, a celebrated physician of the second century AD. Um, let's see, there's a reference to the Roman god of medicine. Of course, there's some stuff that Trollope has just created on his own. 
This was interesting. Uh, in chapter, I think it's chapter four, there's reference to the veiled prophet, which is Hakan ben Ala Makana in Lala Rook by Thomas More. So that's interesting. And then uh, the next reference in that chapter is Zu Zulika from the Persian, meeting brilliant beauty. Um, and that was a heroine in one of Byron's poems. So, you know, again, it's just the Western canon is something that it's, it's, it's like a croissant, right? It's all those flaky layers. And no, like, am I here to say, like, you have to read all of these books? Because I haven't read all of these books. <laughs> Goodness gracious. But I think having read them, uh, we, we definitely come to have a deeper understanding of, uh, of the books that we're reading now, right? Um, they are just so influential um, that, you know, to miss out on them. And I, and I, I may rethink, you know, um, my, my future high priority TBRs. The Bible, um, I have read twice all the way through. I'm not going to read it all the way through again, probably. Um, but there's definitely parts of the Bible that I need to go back to for personal and literary reasons. But uh, yeah, so, but you know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at these beautiful, these beautiful editions. Um, again, that, that someone on booktube uh, gave to me. And, you know, I, I should, I should try it. I should try it again and see what it's like. Because frankly, I mean, you know, I was, I was 18 the last time I cracked one of those open. There's a lot of gray. I don't know if you can see it or not. But, um, so coming back to them now would be a very, very different experience. So anyway, I, if you want to do this tag or if you want to do the, um, why haven't I read these books tag, which I've kind of merged into one, um, apologies to, um, the creators of the, why haven't I read this book tag, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you want to do this tag, please, please feel free and, uh, let me know, um, so that I can watch your version of it. Um, but again, this is a, a, a greatly abridged version of Aaron's, Aaron's initial uh, vision in this tag. And I, again, I will include all of the prompts um, for both tags down below, um, as well as links to the videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'd love to hear what you think. If you don't have a channel, what do you think is part of the Western Canon tag? Tell me down below in the comment section. If you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment, you can always leave an emoji or give this video a thumbs up. And finally, if you haven't subscribed, um, I hope I hope you'll think about sticking around and joining me in some future bookish videos. Uh, so booktube, remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.